Okay, I'm back, and it turns out there was nothing wrong with my computer. It was just that the, the headphone cable had gotten pulled out a little bit. That's why I couldn't hear things. So we're hearing this bass drum and this clap sample in a regular pattern, in a regular cycle. Bass drum, clap. Bass drum, clap. Bass drum, clap. And the way the title notation works is that if I put something else in the quotation marks, so now that there are three things in the quotation marks, those three things take the same time that the two things took before. Now this language, just like punctual, has been designed for live coding. So I'm gonna go back to a blank screen and do something in, in front of you, but I'm gonna think about this now as a performance and not only as a way of exploring the material. So maybe I start from nothing and then I start to make sound. Maybe I let that go for a while. And at a certain point, I decide I wanna introduce something else and I wait. And so that's, that becomes like a moment in the composition or a moment in the improvisation, a moment in the performance, the moment at which that new thing entered. I'm gonna put four things, I'm gonna put claps in between the bass drum and the snare. So now I've had kind of three moments in this improvisation and, and they felt like they have, each moment has felt like a natural step from the one before it. At the same time, there are many millions of different steps I could have taken. So this is a space for improvisation and play, something we can do in front of an audience, something we can turn into a performance. Well, getting back to more to talking about the language, what else can we do with this? Some of the fun things to do is to transform it. Like if I do this, everything's gonna go twice as fast. Or four times as fast. And I'm pressing shift enter in between all of these, by the way. You can also click on the play button if you want. Transformations like this are fun. We can say every two cycles, juxtapose the original with a version that's twice as fast. And so we'll hear the original in the left channel and we'll hear the twice as fast version in the right channel, but only every two cycles. We want to make a particular sample in the pattern happen more often. We can multiply it by something. And if we want to make it unclear whether something will happen, a 50% chance of happening or not happening, we can put a question mark on it. We talked about this earlier in the course. So something we showed earlier in the course that I want to show you again now to refresh your memory about it is working with um, pitched material, which is often musically interesting. So if I start by working with this RP sample, it sounds like this. And if I want to make four of those per cycle, I can multiply it by four. 
And then I'm going to use the hashtag signal to combine that with another pattern that instead of an S pattern is a note pattern. And if I combine it with the note pattern too, everything's going to go up a little bit. So you see, I'm making these changes and I'm pressing shift enter and I'm moving the numbers around and we're hearing we're hearing changes in the music. So this is something, again, that I can use to make a performance in front of someone or a performance for video capture um, in order to submit a fourth project in this course. If I use square brackets inside the quotation marks in this language, it has a similar meaning to what it has in punctual. I can put different numbers separated by commas inside the square brackets and we'll, what will happen is we'll hear all three of those. So now I have a chord. And one of the interesting things that I always like to do with this is to move that chord around with arithmetic. So if I put that in brackets and then inside the brackets add a plus sign and put another pattern Everything in this language between the quotation marks is called a pattern. Um, I'll put a number zero um, for starters. That'll sound the same, but if I put three here, it'll move higher pitch. Or I could put minus two here and it'll move down. And so one of the fun things we can do with this is to put angle brackets inside the quotes, and then we can put a pattern of numbers, like that pattern we just put in, and each one of these numbers will get one cycle. So there's the 3, minus 2, 0, 0, 3, minus 2, 0. And we can do the same tricks that we did with the other thing. Like we could say every two cycles, juxtapose a version that is twice as fast. All right, so what we've done now, I'm going to stop that, is we've reviewed a little bit of Tidal or mini Tidal as found in the Estuary platform. And earlier in the lectures today, we looked at the punctual language. And so the last thing that I want to do for this uh, Tuesday, March 17th lecture is to put these two things together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change one of these boxes over here to punctual. And I'm going to leave this one at mini title. And over in the mini title box, I'm going to make some music. And I'm actually going to combine that using stack. So you see I've got the word stack, and then I've got a square bracket. I've got a comma after my first pattern. And then I'm going to put back something like what I had a second ago from the chords. Get rid of that. And we're going to hear both of them at the same time now. Oh, I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, I'm missing a... missing a closing angle bracket. So now we're hearing both things. If I was doing this as a performance, I could have built that up more slowly. And now maybe I shift to doing some visuals with this. So I can start with my circle that we're so familiar with. 
But what if the X position of the circle depended on the low frequencies in the music? Now the circle's kind of moving with the music. And what if the Y position depended on the high frequencies in the music? And what if the size of the circle depended on the mid frequencies in the music? And this circle is either black or white. It's uh, one or zero in this context. If I multiply that one or zero by three numbers that go, uh, that move around because they're sine oscillators, and the colors will change. What if we add some feedback like we did before? actually helps it seem to line up with the music better somehow, the feedback, I notice. So what we have here are two simple little programs in two different live coding languages, Mini Tidal and Punctual. And if we were doing this as a live coding performance for a project, really the only difference would be that we might build it up slowly, enjoy it a bit in the middle, and then have some strategy for taking it apart. So I'm gonna explore that taking it apart aspect of it now. If I wanted to get to this place in the music and the art and now get out of it and exit gracefully, how would I do it? Well, one way may be to start gradually reducing, eliminating things. So if I take this sound and replace it with a tilde, it will be silent. which has a bit of an effect on the visuals since we made our visuals depend on the music. And what if these four chords, we put a question mark on them so they don't always happen. And what if then I delete this layer of the sound completely? And then maybe I delete this one, just have an empty stack. And now we've ended our performance. It could have gone different ways, um, but that's the fun thing about doing a performance, about improvising with live coding, is that you, you prepare material and you practice and you maybe have some idea of where you're going, but it, it never turns out exactly how you expect. Um, but it always turns out in, in interesting ways. So um, those are ideas that we're gonna take further in later lectures, but I think we've got to a useful arrival point. I want to um, repeat my advice to people that this will make more sense if you try it, if you play with it. So please take the time after watching this lecture to open up Chrome and to try the things out that you see in the video lecture, um, because that will be uh, important um, for what is to, is to come. Um, please don't hesitate to send questions to the Avenue Discussion Forum in particular, um, because probably other people are w wondering the same things and, and can benefit from the answers. And please also don't hesitate to um, send cool things that you found that you can do with these languages to the Avenue Discussion Forum too. I think especially with us not all meeting face-to-face -face, um, because of the um, uh, self-isolation situation that we're in, it would be really great if we... Um, ramped up um, our sharing of ideas and things that we discover in the languages on the Avenue Discussion Forum. So thanks for listening, folks, and I will talk to you again tomorrow.